This next one, I told myself I wasn't getting it. I told myself I didn't need it. And it's just, I get FOMO, I get FOMO. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I have my Sephora VIB savings event haul. I tried to wait till everything came in. Um, I think this is like my second video, I'm not sure. And then I have a couple surprise products that I ordered that I don't wanna do a separate video for, so I'm just gonna put everything together. Before we get into this video, if you're new, I hope that you love makeup and you decide to join this family because we do a lot of hauls, we do a lot of makeup, we do some hair, we do nails, a little bit of everything. So if you're into that, you're gonna love it here, go ahead and join the family. I won't keep you waiting. If you wanna see what I've picked up in my most recent, mostly Sephora haul, then stay tuned and keep on watching. So we're going to start with Sephora and I'm just going to pull out of the package. I think this is two orders by itself. Um, and then there's a whole nother video. So grab your popcorn, grab whatever snack. If you want to drink, grab that too, because we love hauls on this channel. So the first thing I picked up is this K18 by what? Biomimetic. Okay. I don't know why. Biomimetic. Mimetic. Hair Science, this is their Detox Shampoo and Leave-In Molecular Repair Hair Mask. This is a, this is like a little holiday set that they had. This was pretty expensive. I think it was like $70. Um, this Leave-In Mask by itself is $70 or whatever the original price is. I'll put it here on the screen. But this kit came with a sample of the Detox Shampoo, so I made sure to get this. Cause I need to get more bang for my buck. So I haven't tried this, but I heard it's supposed to be really good for damaged hair. And I've said before, I always treat my hair like it's damaged. So thought this would be a great brand to try. Next, I picked up a backup, which is hilarious because I said I was gonna stop doing this, but I love this product. This is the Beauty ben Blender, the Leveler Pore Minimizing Smooth and Fill Primer. This is so good. I got mine in the shade Tan Deep and it really, really fills in your pores. It's kind of like the Porefessional and like all those other primers that fill in your pores, but this one is thick. It is tinted a little darker, so I actually like wearing this by itself sometimes, but I feel like this really fills in your pores and stays where it's supposed to. This is what it looks like. I showed this in my primer declutter video, and I talked about how hard it is to get this out of the packaging. I don't love that. But I love the product and it was already on sale for like $24 or something like that. And I got the 20% off. So I broke my rule. I grabbed a backup. It is what it is. Next, I picked up a new product that I don't have. And of course, since it came in a set, even better. This is the One Size Glam On and Lock In On Till Dawn Mattifying Waterproof Setting Spray. This is two containers. I normally, for the holidays, pick up the Urban Decay All Nighter um, duo that they sell. It's normally supposed to be like 60 bucks. They sell it for 40 and then you get the 20% off. But this year, I, de I decided to try a different one. So I have plenty of backups of the Urban Decay and wanted to try something new. So I'm a little nervous about this one because of how mattifying it says it is. This is probably going to get saved for the summer because winter, my skin is already normal, sometimes dry. And this will probably be a little too heavy duty, but picked it up while it was on sale. Next, I picked up the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Liner in the shade Malt. I have been loving my brown lip liners, and especially now in the winter, you get to wear your darker lips. You can wear them whenever you want, I do, but this is the time. I've never tried the ABH liners. I love their lip products. So this was kind of one of those impulse buys. I was in the store, I saw it, I grabbed it. Nothing I was checking for, but it is a sharpen one, which I don't like. But this is the shade right here. And I like that it's brown, but it's not too, too dark. So I feel like this will be great for a nude lip or just for outlining and maybe filling in a little bit, but then just putting a gloss on top of it. 
This next product was a sale on sale item. This is the Ole Henriksen Banana Bright Sun Kissed Face Primer. I have always wanted to try this primer. I have never tried it. I almost bought it in Marshalls or TJ Maxx or something like that. But this one is actually a self tanner, vitamin C and banana powder inspired pigment. Why would they say that? Gradual glow enhancer. So I like to be bronze. We know that my foundation is normally darker than my face. I'm fine with it. But when I do lay out, when I try to get darker, I put a bunch of sunscreen on my face and not on the rest of my body. So my face is normally lighter. So I thought this would be great to kind of help even things out a little bit, even though my foundation's gonna cover it. Especially because sometimes if I'm not wearing a full coverage foundation, then it's very obvious that my face is lighter than my body. But I do that because I have dark spots. I don't want them to get darker, so you need to wear sunscreen. So I have no idea how this works. I don't even remember if the reviews are good. I don't normally listen to that. If it's something I wanna try, I grab it and this is on sale, so even better. Next, I picked up, okay, another impulse. Didn't need it, but I was in the store. This is the Dior Addict Lip Glow Oil. I think this is the thing that everybody's gone nuts about for years and I have never tried it. So I was actually out of town and I saw these in stock and I was like, you know, since it's in stock, maybe I need to try it. Um, I got mine in the shade 001 Pink. I started to get the orange one, but I didn't because it might be in this basket. Or maybe I talked about it already. I don't know, but I also picked up the House Labs lip oil in the orange shade. So I wanted to get something different. So this is what it looks like. I know you guys have seen this so many times. And it's very pretty, very luxe looking, but... I just put gloss on, but we can put this too. Um, I honestly just wanted to see what the hype was about. And I just got lip product all over this. It's kind of goopy. But it feels good. I think it might be tingly a little bit. It smells like mint. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know, but... Whatever, everybody's been talking about this. This is a cherry oil influ infused, nourishing, glossy lip oil. So my lips were already glossy. This added a little more. Again, just another impulse buy. I picked up another lip liner. I did not need any more lip liners, but every time I've checked for this, it has been out of stock. So I saw it and I grabbed it immediately. Makeup by Mario. I love the lip pencils. I have one right here. This one I have is in the shade Chris, I believe. Jeff. No. I thought I didn't have Jeff, which is why I picked this up. And now I have Jeff. Do I keep it or bring it back? I don't know. Apparently, I just decided to buy a backup for whatever reason because Barbara forgets what she has already. So, yeah. This is Jeff. I have Jeff. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or bring it back. I use lip liners a lot, so it will get used. But I also have a bunch of others, so I don't know. I decided to pick up an, a brow kit. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Fluffy and Fuller Looking Brow Kit. As you guys have noticed, and some people have commented, I've been trying to wear my brows a little bit fluffier, less sculpted. I don't mind the sculpted look sometimes, especially when I'm doing a more glam look. But usually I just kind of... Fluff them up, fill them in a little bit, put some powder, not powder, but gel on, and I go about my business. So I thought this would be cool. Plus, I've been wanting to try the ABH um, Brow Freeze. So this is a powder with a spoolie and a, what do you call this thing, Barbara Lord? Dual-ended brush <laughs> and the Brow Freeze. So I thought this was a good set. I don't know how much I'm going to use the powder. I might. Who knows? But I mainly got it for this, and this is great to travel with. So cute little set. It was $29 and then 20% off. The Brow Freeze, I think is $20 by itself. And I will probably, I don't know, maybe I would use it all, maybe not. But to try it, this made more sense. This is the other product I was talking about. This is the House Labs by Lady Gaga PhD Hybrid Lip Oil. So this one is in that orange shade called Secondary. And this seemed to be the one that was the most popular. And I think they said that Lady Gaga wears this one a lot. Whatever. It's different. So that made me feel better about picking it up. Packaging is 
really really cute also feels very luxe i want to smell it applicator looks the same this doesn't smell like anything i mean i have gloss on already so you know but i want to see what this will look like with a regular liner this doesn't really say anything as far as claims and all that on it and i don't feel like going on the website to read it but this has gotten a lot of great reviews, so I decided to pick it up. This next product is actually a skincare item. This is the Sephora AHA BHA PHA 13% Resurfacing Peel Mask. It is meant to resurface and refine and smooth your skin. I feel like my skin has been doing so well, and I'm really, really proud. But again, I'm still working on my dark spot, so... There's only so much you can do topically. If you're not exfoliating and getting into the deeper layers, then it's really not gonna help with the older scars. So I've looked into getting a peel professionally, but they say you can't work out for like a week or something, and we all know that is not gonna happen with me. So I'm just gonna take the long way around it and try to use topical products that are supposed to also help. So let me just open. This says you apply a thin layer on clean, dry skin, not around your eyes, leave on for 10 to 15 minutes and then rinse with water. Due to the concentration of acid, slight tingling may occur. So good, sounds like it should work. So I will definitely be putting this in my skincare routine soon because we're making progress, but I still wanna keep working on it. I decided to pick up another lash applicator, y'all. I feel like I've been getting good with my lashes. Today these worked and didn't give me any issues. Um, but I don't use regular tweezers to put them on. It does not work for me. So I picked up the Sephora brand Angled False Eyelash Applicator. Um, I have several different kinds of these and I feel like these work best for me. And so I bought another one because these were 30% off on the Sephora sale. And I wanted to have one to, I can't open this, to um, put in my travel bag because I don't even remember. I think I just have tweezers in my travel bag and that is not gonna cut it for me to wear lashes when I'm out of town. So trying to make my life as easy as possible. So this is what it looks like. It is fairly simple if you have seen these before, but it just makes it a lot easier to put it on and holds more of the lash for you. So yeah, decided to pick up another one of these, just the Sephora brand. This was a bit of an impulse buy. Now backstory, I have tried a different variation of this. This is the Alien Mugler, Mugler, however you pronounce it, um, Eau de Parfum. This is the goddess one. Now, I tried the original one a while back and I tried it because it was in the special limited edition rainbow packaging that I thought was gorgeous and would have been perfect on my vanity and I hated it. It smelled so bad and I just could not. So I decided to buy this one and hoped that it would smell better and the notes did sound like it was different. Are the notes on here? So this has 3.2 thousand reviews and four and a half stars. It says it's a warm floral, which the other one did too, but it says this one has bergamot essence, jasmine, grandiflorum, whatever, and bourbon vanilla. So this is kind of leading into that bourbony kind of sweet kind of definitely fall winter appropriate but yes this one smells so much better it doesn't have like i feel like the other one had a lot of patchouli or something in it and i just could not i sprayed it and smelled it and it went back immediately so excited to have one by this brand that i like and something else to add to my fall and winter collection this was another impulse buy. I went in store, I swatched it, and thought it was beautiful. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Beautifying Face Palette. This has blush and glow for the eyes, cheeks, and face. I did pick this one up in the medium to deep version. I love the packaging on this. Very luxe. Oh, just, I don't know if you guys can see... My lights are probably gonna wash this out, but there's like an iridescence kind of in the back with purple and pink and like a yellow, neon yellow, I don't know, but super cute. And then this is what it looks like. So this shade automatically drew me in 
This actually looks good. I'll go ahead and swatch them. But it was the blushes and the actual highlighters that got me. These highlighters are so soft. And I'm praying that they show up because this is one of the highlighters. So you can see that there, very soft. This is the other one, so a little more in your face. Then here's one of your blushes. So that one's light, but it still shows up on my skin. And then this one is like, oh, my knuckles in the way. My everyday love wearing shades like that, kind of like a berry. So yeah, I thought I like Charlotte Tilbury blushes. I have one of the, I don't even remember which one, the Pillow Talk one that has the highlighter in the middle and then the blush on the outside. So I just wanted to try, I don't think I really have, I don't know, we're not gonna get into that. I wanted to try this and so I picked it up and I think it's gorgeous. I picked up, <laughs> I'm a mess. I picked up another lash applicator. Y'all, I'm determined, determined to get these lashes right because I always like how they look on other people and I wanna wear bigger lashes so I feel like it's the tool, it's not me, it's the tools that I'm using. So this one is a little different because if you see here at the top, the applicator is a little bit different the way you grab it. And then also at the bottom, you can use this to like press on the inner corners. So I have one like this somewhere already. Sephora sale, everything is 30% off of the Sephora brand. So these are not expensive, so I just grabbed it. I have a plastic one very similar that I got from Ardell, but this one does not, I don't know, it doesn't, it's plastic and it just, I feel like I have to work harder to use it. I don't know, even though I like this little spongy part on the end. So I got another one, that's it. I picked up a hair product. This is the Living Proof Restore Repair Leave-In. Again, another hair product. My hair is getting really long. This is probably the longest it has ever been. So I'm trying to keep the length, I'm trying to keep it healthy, but again, still treat it like it's damaged and give it all the love and moisture and nurturing that it needs. So this is a trans, a leave-in conditioner that says transform dry damaged hair with this reparative leave-in that makes hair stronger so it stays soft and smooth with less breakage. All I need to hear. I picked up another face product. This is the Fashion Fair Lush Blush Duo. I don't have any Fashion Fair blush products. I have their cream to powder and I have their serum, I believe, and I think that's it. I picked this up in the shade Chocolate Chip. There were three shades available and this one I felt like was the most different than what I have already in my collection. I like the packaging. It has the embossing on the front here, but this, it was just something about it that made me feel like I had to have it. This shade here, I can pick this up. This is a cream and it's a gorgeous kind of coral, coral pinky orange. But then this shade right here would be like the perfect hybrid of a blush and a bronzer. And so I feel like those two together would give you just this gorgeous, deep sun-kissed, ooh, scrumptious looking sculpt. So, I felt like the colors were different enough than anything else that I have. And it kind of reminded me of the Patrick Ta duo. So I wanted to see how Fashion Fair compared and I just love the color story. This next product I did not need to buy. I'm about to open this already. So this is a backup. I bought another of the Beja Flor Elastic Cream by Sol de Janeiro. I love how this smells. It does give me Baccarat Rouge 540 vibes, not 100% the same, but I bought two of the body sprays last Sephora haul, last Sephora sale. Hear my Alexa talking to me. Um, so I bought one of the minis to try it, and then I bought a big one because I just felt like I was gonna love it, and so I bought another big one. So I have my body sprays and this to, Later on before I go to bed and just lay down and smell myself. I'll wear this during the day too, but I usually have a perfume on and then I wear this in the evenings. I picked up another Sephora exclusive. So this was also a Sephora product, 30% off. This is the Sephora House of Lashes Lash Glue Duo. So there's a clear and a black. I've heard that this lash glue is really, really good. 
I normally buy drugstore lash glue, but I have found that sometimes I cannot get it to stick. I don't know what my problem is. Some days it works, some days it doesn't. Today was a really good day, but yeah. I just decided to pick this one up because one of these regular price is $9. And this set was $14 and the 30% off. So I felt like it was a win-win. Plus, I feel like I remember one day I was looking for lash glue and I couldn't find it. So panic mode set in like you don't have backups. So mm -hmm. now we have backups. I have another fragrance. I had to. I smelled this while I was on vacation and I lost my mind. This is the YSL Mon Paris Intense version. Y'all, this is sweet. Let me find the notes. She is sweet, but it was just something about this. I, I, I don't have any YSL fragrances and I don't know that I was necessarily looking for any more fragrances, but just, it's also, this one's a fruity floral. So it's black currant, rose, and white musk. I don't smell a lot of rose. I don't like rose. That is not my thing, but there's just something about this. And I got the big daddy bottle because i just feel like this is something that even though it says it's the intense brand the intense version i'm probably gonna wear it a lot plus i think this is so pretty it kind of reminds me i was thinking like the jimmy choo blossom i'm looking at my collection to see maybe not i thought it reminded me of something else but it doesn't but i'm gonna spray this i just have to i don't have anything on this is so good. It is sweet. Oh, but it is so strong. Yes, absolutely love. This is probably going to be one of my top favorites up there with my Baccarat Rouge, with my Jo Malone, like just anything that is intense and has that little bit of musk with a little bit of sweet just draws me in. Very, very sexy smell. I know I just recently decluttered my concealers. And then I think I bought two concealers. So this first one, I thought I had this already and I was planning on doing a full face. I think I could do a full face. I'm not sure, I have to double check. Of LYS and then I don't think I had a concealer. I don't I don't remember seeing it. So if I did, oh well. But <laughs> this is the chip, Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. I picked this one up in the shade DN3. I think when I went to buy this, when it first came out, I was still in my buying my concealers ridiculously light phase and the tones that they had in the lighter shades I just didn't like I love the packaging on this super sleek very very pretty but now I'm kind of leaning more into not so bright and then setting it with a brighter powder so that it doesn't look too stark and I feel like this shade is going to be a really good more everyday shade can you even see that That might be a little bit darker than I thought. Either way, it's going to work for more neutral days when I don't want to do a full face. Maybe just put something under my eye and put powder to set it. So looking forward to trying this. And I lied because something told me to just go check. And voila, I already had this concealer. I had it in TN6. So I guess I can swatch to compare them. Y'all, I just went through these. So you can see that one is brighter. I'm still gonna keep it. <laughs> it is what it is. One will be for my more glam days. One will be for more neutral. I do like the formula of this and this brand is really affordable, a black owned brand. So whatever we're supporting, we got a backup. The other concealer I picked up, I had been trying to get this for a while now and I could not figure out my shade online. So I went into the store, swatched it, and still felt like I didn't like what I saw, so I didn't pick it up. And then I checked again this store, this sale, and I ended up liking one of the shades. This is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer. I wanted to try this, especially right now with the winter months. I do not want super matte products under my eyes because I do have fine lines. So I do want it to be luminous, but I don't want it to crease. And so I don't want anything that has a dewy finish. It needs to dry down, but not be cakey and dry looking. 
So this isn't new. This is what the packaging looks like. I picked it up in seven, one in neutral. I was looking at like six and five when I first thought about it, but this one is again, well, that's actually a little lighter than I thought it was. So it's more in line with this shade here, but it's still not that super, super bright that y'all are used to seeing me use. I'm trying to get better about it. Today I went with, this is old actually, this is the NARS in the pot. I can't even think of the name. Creamy, complete, oh, I can't on the screen. I don't remember. NARS Soft Matte Complete Whatever Concealer. It's been sitting and I'm like, I need to finish it up. So that's what I have on today. And I like how this looks. Um, but yeah, finally got this. Been wanting to try it. This next product was another impulse buy. This is the Danessa Myricks Color Fix Foil in the shade Jewels. I'm not sure I'm going to keep this, honestly. Part of me... Feels like I shouldn't because I have both of her palettes and I have a bunch of other multi-chromes and I'm, but I don't know if this is considered a multi-chrome or if this is just like a super foiled liquid eyeshadow. It's in this kind of green shade here. And I think when I wanted to try it in the store, I couldn't get it to squeeze out of the tube, but I just like, I don't know if you can see how this is shifting. It's like green gold with a kind of rose gold peach undertone to it. Yeah, like looking at it in the top right now, it looks like it's pink, but squeezing it out. <gasps> oh, this is definitely not for the faint of heart. You have to like color, but just the way this looks on my hand, I hope it is picking up all the shades. Like that is so bright. It even looks like there's some blue. What is the shade? I don't even know, but I could not even imagine. I would have to have like a very special look to go with this, but that is super bright, super shiny, metallic-y, shifty, all the gorgeous things that makes me decide I'm going to pick up a multi-chrome shade. So that is what it looks like. I hope you can see the shifts on my finger, but yeah, so, so pretty. This next product I talked myself out of at the beginning of the sale, and then I talked myself back into it because I swatched it. This is old and it has been sold out off and on since it came out. So there was one in the store that I went to and I told myself that was a sign. This is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette, highlight and blush in the shade 002 Glitz. Now this is a very gorgeous quad. And I will not lie, I have used this already and I have no regrets, none at all. I love every shade in here. The first two shades are very, very light, so you have to be careful on darker skin, but I mix them. This one is my favorite. And then even this one I feel like looks good. Let me swatch them. I should have swatched. I'm thinking about that I didn't swatch the Fashion Fair. I wasn't planning on swatching, but just which one is that that barely showed maybe i didn't do a good swatch so that's the super bronzy one which you can barely see that's my favorite one there that's a lighter one why didn't that first one swatch try that again did i just swatch the same thing twice lord help her yeah i guess i did hmm let me try this bronzy one again. These two look like they're the same. So I maybe swatch the same thing twice. But either way, you can wear these kind of built up to be super blinding. You can shear them out a little bit if you want to just to have a nice little glow. But I thought all the shades would work with my skin tone. So I finally decided to pick it up. We are about to get into the fun stuff. And I said I wasn't going to swatch, but I don't know because... We're doing eyeshadows. So I picked up one of the Dior Backstage eye palettes. I don't have any of these in my collection and they came out with a greenish theme color story. So right up my alley. This one is in the shade Khaki Neutrals. So same packaging as the face palette. Oh, but this color story right here. Love me some good greens. I feel like, I wonder if I could put that on right now kind of want to 
This is probably one shade I'm not gonna mess with. This is a topper, we're not gonna swatch. But this shade right here is a cream base, and then the other shades are powders. So I just thought this color story was pretty, and I think this will be a great introduction to the eyeshadow formula because I've never tried it. So got us some more greens. I have one more thing I'm gonna talk about before I get into the rest of the eyeshadow palettes because I just wanna try to keep my palettes together. I picked up one of the Sephora blushes. This is their blush duo in Tiger Lily. I don't know what it is about this one, but when I saw it, I just felt like it was something that I had to have. The color story kind of reminds me of the Fashion Fair one, but it's a blush powder. It's not a cream. I can't open this. And I've heard really good thing about the Sephora blushes. I have palettes. I don't know if I have single blushes or not. It never matters if I have it or not. We all know I'm just gonna end up getting it anyway. But so this is the duo right here. So this is more of like that neutral everyday kind of terracotta shade that I love, but then this bright orange. No, we can't really see that. I don't know, I can see it. And I think this would be like a gorgeous combo just to be able to wear every day, especially like springtime kind of vibes is what this gave me. So love that you get two in one. The next eyeshadow palette that I picked up, I told myself I didn't need it, told myself I wasn't gonna buy it, and then I got FOMO, and so I had to buy it. This is the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. This is not new. I've heard people review this and say it's nothing special. If you have the other ones, you really don't need it. Other brands do better with the duo chromes. I love this brand, I love the formula, and I'm a collector, so I felt like I needed to have it. I love that this has a black, this shade and this shade are like staples. If a palette has it, everything else is just gonna work for me. And then of course, this duo chrome right here, I hope you can see is kind of like a pink, green, that gorgeous, one of my favorite duo chromes. So yeah, I wanted it, had to have it, and happy I got it on sale. This next palette I'm going to have to try soon because I'm honestly not sure if I'm gonna keep it or not, mainly because of Double-edged sword, love, hate the color story. Huda Beauty Empowered. I'm not a gold eyeshadow person anymore. When I first got into makeup, I was all about big gold shadow on the lid, have to have it, and now I just, it's not my favorite anymore. This, I love the idea of it. I feel like it's a combination of, what's the one, Naughty Nudes with the lighter nude one that she had. There's a cool tone, warm tone vibe going in here. But just looking at this in the pan, I think it is so gorgeous. I love how deep it runs. I love that there are cool tones. There's only two golds. These two shades right here are actually creams. So I just like the innovative idea of the palette. I don't know why they do these things like this because once you swirl them all together, it's one shade, but whatever it's in there and I love the shades in here except for the golds and I thought I wasn't going to get it because of the golds but I just decided not to let that stop me oh I just realized huh okay so this manifested shade I thought this was just a dent in it where are we at this one right here thought it was just a dent but there's actually like a cream or something running through the middle of that. She is always doing something extra with her formulas. So this is probably gonna be one of the first ones I try because I ain't gonna lie, I'm probably gonna keep it. But this is just completely different from anything else. And I'm trying to remember, I feel like, I don't remember if I have any of her other palettes. I reviewed the latest one that came out, the Quartz and I didn't like it and I brought it back and I got rid of the rose gold remastered. I had that a long time ago. So I'm gonna have to check, but I don't think I have any Huda, only the small ones. I have the nine pan ones. So yeah, have this and just based on the color story minus the golds, I feel like I'm gonna love it, but we'll see. This next one, I told myself I wasn't getting it. I told myself I didn't need it. And it's just, I get FOMO, I get FOMO. 
<laughs> now I know if I could have waited, which I'm sure I could have, because I don't need any of this right now, I could have gotten this for 30% off. I didn't want to wait. I've been waiting since it came out and it's never included in her sales. So I probably would have had to wait till this summer and I didn't want to. So I picked up Mothership number, which one is this? Why don't she say it on her packaging? Is this 10? I feel like we had a 10 already. Anyway, Moonlit Seduction. When I saw the reviews, I felt like all the shades were too light. And so I was like, I don't need this. That's not gonna look good on my skin tone anyway. And then I saw it in store and I swatched it and I put it in my cart. I love, y'all know me and my multi-chromes. So that's number one. You can see it in the top in the mirror versus in the pan. Super, absolutely, I got a swatcher. I have to. Gorgeous shade. I swatched this in the store and that's what did me in. It looks almost like a pink and then it goes to a blue and a purple and just the most gorgeous iridescent shade. Oh. I bought this palette for that shade. And I told myself that made absolutely no sense, but I am a huge Pat McGrath fan. And there was, I couldn't talk myself out of having this in my collection. We'll just be real. So went ahead and picked it up. I don't know anything about the other shades. I don't really care. I love Pat McGrath and I love that shade. So yeah, she had to join the collection. So that's it for my Sephora haul, but that is not it for the haul. I have some indie brand stuff that I picked up and it's just a few little things so I wanted to go ahead and throw those in this I actually bought while I was on vacation another fragrance this is the Bulgari Omnia Amethyst I bought this when I was coming back from Mexico and I bought it in the duties customs area where they tell you oh you should get it because it's tax-free I don't remember seeing the amethyst anywhere else recently so I'm pretty sure this is older but I loved how it smelled and I know I like Bulgari fragrances. So I just decided to go ahead and pick this up. I think it was 90 bucks and I got it for 10% off. Y'all know I love purple and I didn't have to pay tax and it came home with me in my suitcase. So this is gonna end up in the front of my vanity for show because it is beautiful. And it smells really, really good. I would actually wear this versus some of the other stuff that I've bought and I don't wanna wear. While we're on fragrances, I decided to include these two. These were sent to me and they did not say that I had to talk about them, but I want to include them because I have included them before. These are from the brand Dossier and these are basically affordable options for super expensive, high-end luxe fragrances. I absolutely love the idea of this because this is how I decided to try Baccarat Rouge 540. I tried their brand of it and I also tried um, one of the Killian perfumes because I knew that sweet smells for the Killian was not really up my alley. And I'm sorry, Baccarat Rouge is like $300 plus. And I didn't want to spend that if I wasn't going to like it. So I got those sent to me. And I knew from the sense here that I was going to love the original and it made me feel better about spending the money for the real one. However, because it is so expensive, I don't want to wear the real one all the time. So I will, I actually have their, I think it's called Ambery Saffron is their version of Baccarat Rouge. That is in my purse. And I take that with me everywhere and I'll spray it as much as I want because I don't mind replacing it for 30 or 40 bucks. So I have heard a lot about Creed and I have never tried any of their fragrances. So I decided to pick up one of them that is a version of a Creed fragrance. So this one is called Fruity Oak Moss and it's inspired by Creed Adventus for her. So its top notes are green apple, bergamot, and lemon. Middle notes are peach rose and what is this word y'all? Lang Lang, Yang Yang. And then the base notes are musk, oak moss, Oak Moss Patchouli and Sandalwood. Now, I'm glad Patchouli is way at the bottom. I like this. I like this a lot. And if I didn't spray the other stuff on me, I would spray this. I have not worn this yet, 
but this definitely smells more winter. It's not fruity. It's not floral. It is. Very, it has the citrus. It has the bergamot. It has the lemon and the apple. But the under tones of the sandalwood and the musk just make it a lot more sexy and fall winter appropriate. So glad that I tried this because if I can find the original on sale, I might have to pick that one up too. The other one I picked up, I wasn't sure which version of the alien perfume I liked and didn't like. So I picked up another version. This is their version called Ambery Cedarwood, but this is the Terry Mugler Alien Eau de Parfum. So I think this is just the original. This one has mandarin, cardamom, orange blossom, middle notes, jasmine, sambac, and cedarwood. And then base notes are heliotrope, flower, amber, and vanilla. There is something about the after, the dry down of this. This is gonna sound bad. It almost smells skunky. It's not a musk. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's this heliotrope because I've never smelled that. Like I smell it initially and I'm like, yeah, I like this. But then I felt like as it dries down, I don't know. I'm going to try it again because I've become more adventurous with my fragrances. But something about this one just doesn't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. I don't want to make a judgment based off of what I thought it was like before. But again, if you are interested in trying any fragrances that you feel are too expensive, you don't want to blind buy, go check out their website and you can type in the name of the fragrance that you're looking for and it'll tell you the name of their version of it. Definitely worth it. And Black Friday, they are having a sale for different weeks. I'm going to post the information in the description box. But if you want to try it, Go to the website, check it out. You will not regret it. Okay, I'm trying to wind this down so it doesn't take too long to edit, but I have some more palettes. Don't judge me. Listen, I've been going through it, y'all. I'm gonna try to post this fast. We are in November right now. I got laid off in August, never been laid off in my life. And your girl went through a little funk. It was bad. I haven't been posting as much. I haven't been filming as much kind of scrambled, stressed out about needing to hurry up and find a job. Then I was like, you know what? Just relax. You've been in corporate since 2005. You've never had time off. You've worked more than one job most of that time. Take your time. Enjoy it. And I think I started shopping to kind of make myself feel better and especially eyeshadows. We all know that is the thing that does it for me. So I decided to pick up some indie brand stuff too and just throw it in this haul because I don't want to do a separate video. This is Notoriously Morbid. I have bought their multi-chromes before, but I don't I always say I don't know. I don't think I have any palettes from them. Either way, this was the pre-order of the Rusted Essence palette. And this is what she looks like. I think this is really cute. I think it is fall appropriate. This looks like it's a multi-chrome right here. Maybe this one is, or duochrome, I don't know. I don't remember, but y'all know I love greens. And I kind of like that they have this kind of purplish green versus just a brown. So it kind of helps make it a little more fall rustic. This pink is a nice twist to it, but I don't know. I'm going to have to try the palette. I saw Lynette's review of it. She said she didn't like it, so that kind of makes me bummed out a little bit. But I'm going to try to form my own opinion, not just go by what she said. But I didn't like how long it took for this to get to me. But yeah, that's that. Um, I also picked up two of their liners. I think I just did this because of shipping. I don't remember. One is their Buddy Blue. And then their other is Shy Violet. So these are pretty small. But it looks like the tube itself is kind of big. And I'll go ahead and swatch these real quick. I have not even opened these yet. So this is supposed to be violet. Might help if I shake it. This is the Buddy Blue. Okay, there we go. And this is what this one looks like. Ooh, that's pretty. It's a brush tip, which... I like, but it's like one of those thin, flimsy brushes, so I feel like it's going to be hard to get a really precise line with that. Like, if you press too hard, it'll make it wide. 
And then this is the, supposed to be violet. Not sure what's happening. Maybe I'm not shaking this enough. Let me try. Okay, I shook it. Oh, is this a dud? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna keep trying to get this to show because clearly that is not what that's supposed to look like, but I'll try again at the end of the video if I remember. This palette is from a different brand. Color Story totally drew me in. It was sold out, it came back. Apparently sells out really quick, so I grabbed it as soon as it was available. Haven't tried this brand before. This is the Cosmic Beauty, I believe is the name of it. Their Serenity palette. Y'all look at this packaging. Like just the color. It's cardboard, it's nothing special, but I don't know why I saw this and just felt like this was just such a innovative, new color story. And maybe it is, but again, I'm a visual person, so I need to see it all together. And I felt like these together, I was like, do they go together? But I feel like they kind of do. I've never tried this brand, so I got to swatch a few. I'm going to swatch this bluish shade. I'm going to swatch a matte. Ooh, this is the green in the middle. So here we have Serenity. Then we have Awake, which is the kind of pastel purple. And then, oh, that is dark. That is forest. That is a dark green, super, super pigmented shade. So very, very, very promising. Haven't tried it, but can't wait to. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I finally bit the bullet. I've seen reviews on this palette so many times, and this is another FOMO. This is the Fantasy Cosmetica Druid palette. I love the color story of this, and the one thing that made me think that I was not going to get this was the fact that this brown right here and this shade right here, I felt like were too similar. And so I didn't want to buy it. Loved everything else, but I was mad about that. And I said I wasn't going to get it. And then I finally bit the bullet and got it. Now, when this came in, this shade in the middle was shattered. I was able to push it back in. I did not have to use any alcohol or anything like that, but I was upset about that. Y'all know me and my greens. I don't know why I tried to act like I wasn't going to get this palette. And Jamila, I hope I'm saying your name right. It's all your fault because you talked me into this more than once. I saw your review and then I asked you about it on Instagram and you said it was worth it. So now I have it. I'm not going to swatch this one. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm going to swatch the shade in the middle, which is Serenity. Oh, that's gorgeous. Balance at the top and then... I just swatched a forest. Let's try this sage. I always do the shimmer. So this is the matte green shade. That's pretty. That's pretty. Yeah. Greens are going to get me every time. So this is something I've kind of lusted over for a while. And now I try to give myself time. If I'm not sure, I wait. And then if there's months that go by and I'm still thinking about it, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it because life is short and I'm not stressing. Life is short. Buy the palette. Now this, I think I did a, I did, I did a shorts and I think I did a YouTube story. This is my Cleona Cosmetics stained glass collection. I bought one of their Halloween bundles. I hope there is instructions in here because I just took everything out. I don't even remember which one I bought. I think this was the Harvest bundle. Where there's a seance and then something else. I don't remember. I'll put it on the screen, but I've already opened this. This is what they look like. We're not going to get into swatches. This video is already long. I do plan on doing a dedicated video, but I haven't shown these to you guys yet. If you don't follow me on Instagram, Miss Barbell Barbie, go check it out because I do sometimes post shorts um, or reels. Also, beauty underscore in underscore strength underscore official is my makeup page and I have stuff on there too. So yeah, these are going to get a video dedicated specifically for them because this is beautiful. Last but not least, 
I was a sucker. And I bought the Lunar Beauty Advent Calendar eyeshadow palette. Big old box. I haven't even opened it. I started to do a dedicated video and then I watched a spoiler and I was honestly disappointed. So I don't even know if I want to do a dedicated video on this. Comment below and let me know if you want to see it. This is the Lunar Beauty 12 Days of Lunar Color Palette Advent Calendar. I saw this box. I saw the palette and thought, oh my God, I'm going to love the colors. Purple, blue, like pinks maybe, some greens. Like this is just going to be absolutely beautiful. I'm going to show y'all better than I can tell you. So again, the idea of it, freaking genius. Love that Manny did this. You got to open this up. So give me a minute because my nails are not going to let me be great. Okay, so you open this right here and this is your palette. Again, love the packaging, was excited for that. Love the idea that you get one shade each day and they're all a surprise. He did a reveal of, I think, three of them, but I was just like, it's going to match this and it's going to be gorgeous. So yeah, why not? So we're just going to go through them real quick. Not going to do swatches. This did come with an extra shade because he said during his reveal that there was one shade that didn't have the quality he wanted. So they had a bunch of them made. He decided to give them to us, but also had it remade. So... I don't even know if there's any order I'm gonna to try to put these in, but I'm gonna to try to go through it fast. So this is the first day. And for the girl who doesn't like golds, we have a gold. It does kind of look like it is duochrome-ish, maybe. Am I tripping or is it just a straight up gold? It looks like gold with green, but so I don't know. I saw that and I was just like, oh boy, starting off on not the best foot. Day two, this shade I thought was nice. So this is kind of, a, kind of a berry, purple, gorgeous shade for the winter. Feel like it goes kind of with the palette. So, all right, we can go with that. Day three, and these do not have names or anything like that. So here's where I started getting worried because I watched Angelica Nyquist open hers and she was like, Oh, another gold. This one is lighter than the first one. I'm going to hold these up together so you can see. But yeah, it's still a gold. So yeah, day four. I kind of wish I wouldn't have watched and I would have just waited because I don't know if I would have been as disappointed, but I had already ordered mine and I was waiting for it to come in and just like blah. Of course, you have to have a nice crease shade. So I can appreciate that this is in here because then I don't have to reach for another palette. So not mad about that one. This next shade is kind of like a icy champagne shade. So it's different, but still kind of feeling like this palette is leaning very neutral. This is day six. This is a yellow, like a marigold kind of shade. Not something that I would necessarily gravitate towards, but I guess better than a standard neutral shade. So, okay. Day seven. This is more of like a taupey kind of bronze, which I like these shades more now. So this can replace one of the golds easy for me. Day eight. Cool that it's a pop of color. Where does this fit in? Like why? It's green, so I guess I'm gonna give a little bit of slack for that because I love my greens, but I'm just really at this point kind of feeling like where is this theme going because it does not match with what the packaging is. This is day nine. So this is kind of like a olive green, which love. This is for me, so thank you for that at least. Day 10, this is another crease shade. Not my crease, but I guess we had to have a lighter one. So it's a brown, kind of mustardy-ish, but it's a brown. Day 11, this shade is actually kind of pretty. It's like a pinkish purple shimmer shade. And he did say there were six shimmers and six mattes. I do feel like this kind of goes with the packaging. So 
okay you have your dark plum so now we have a shimmer to match and then day 12 you gotta have a black so not mad about that but overall I feel like this is a neutral palette and the color story doesn't match the packaging which was pretty disappointed so I'm gonna put these in here and then show you it all together uh, I guess I can go ahead and look at this one I don't remember Oh, it says, please replace day nine with this one instead. Okay, so I thought that that one was the right one. This is the real one. It does kind of look smoother. I don't know. This is the one he said replace. So I'm going to put this one in the palette. But yay, I got two greens. So let me put these in the palette real quick. All right, so now everything's together and you can, got, you can get a full picture. So, ooh, pretty packaging. Ooh, this is going to be so gorgeous. Bright, colorful, blues, purples. What? I tried to put them in order of lightest to darkest, but that's what we have. So again, kind of disappointed with the color story, but hopefully the formula is great. I have his other palettes. The only one I've used, I have Strawberry Dreams. I have, I always get this Lunar Eclipse, Eternal Eclipse eternal lunar i don't know the name of it i always get it wrong but i have that one and i have this one i think that's all that i have and i've only tried one so it is what it is nice gimmicky idea and you got me that is it for my haul i feel like this video was long so i'm gonna have fun editing it but i hope you guys enjoyed it if you stay till the end comment and let me know what was the last thing i reviewed I love to hear you guys hear from you guys and I love to see your comments. So let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, I hope you decided to join the family and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.